in the most significant changes in our policy in more than 50 years. We will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests, and instead we will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. That was President Obama this week unveiling sweeping changes to U.S. policy towards Cuba in the wake of a swap that freed American contractor Alan Gross after five years in prison. The president announced the surprise deal Wednesday and said his administration will take steps to normalize diplomatic relations with Cuba and ease economic and travel restrictions. He also called on Congress to have an honest and serious debate about lifting the trade embargo, which has been in place since 1962. Joining the panel this week, Wall Street Journal columnist and deputy editor Dan Henninger, America's columnist Mary Anastasia O'Grady, and Global View columnist Brett Stephen. So, Mary, you've covered Cuba for years. Is this a better deal for Cuba or the United States? Oh, quite obviously it's a better deal for the Cuban regime, not for the Cuban people. Um, and not only because we got one a uh, person who was spying for us, who was in prison in Cuba for uh, almost 20 years, in exchange for three uh, Cuban spies that were in jail in the U.S. And Alan Gross. Uh, and Alan Gross, but the president insists that was part of a humanitarian deal that he made <laughs> with, uh, with the Castros. But um, I think the other big reason here, obviously, is that uh, the president has uh, legitimized the uh, regime by restoring diplomatic relations. He's going to negotiate towards that end. Same. Right. And so he wants to have a U.S. embassy uh, in Cuba and uh, open a Cuban embassy here. Uh, you know, the, the big thing here, Paul, is that Cuba right now is on the ropes. I mean, they, they, they're they losing all this uh, subsidy money they're getting from Venezuela through the oil market, both because the Venezuelan economy is in bad shape and also because the oil price is dropping. The last time that sort of thing happened in Cuba was 1994, and that's when they had to introduce the special period, which was to basically start really liberalizing the economy. And they almost lost control. And as the economy healed, they went right back to their police state. And they're getting close to that now, and President Obama is stepping in and bailing them out. Okay, Brett, what do you think about that? Is he, is he... Well, look, I mean, the idea of lifting the trade embargo isn't necessarily a bad idea. The idea of a different, you know, changing 50 years of policy isn't a bad one because... We've been stuck with the same problem for, for, for so long. We endorsed it, by the way, 20 years ago. Right. And look, but the problem here is, is not a question of the principle. It, it's, it's doubts about the execution. How much leverage have we given up? And I'm afraid we've given up too much leverage at the very beginning for the sake of what amounts to a kind of a photo op moment for uh, the president. You know, we had a reset with Russia. We attempted a reset with Iran. We also had a reset rather analogous to this one with the Burmese junta, with the Burmese dictators. And what we found is none, none of them worked, in part because we gave up so much at the beginning so that six months, a year down the road, there was very little pressure that we could bring to bear to make the regime change. But Dan, what about the argument that the president is making that if we flood them with investment, we flood them with, uh, we, we, we put our arms around them, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we'll get better results than we've got the last 50 years where they've, the Castros have persevered, the people are as persecuted as ever. Maybe if we give them new information technology, they will open up. Yeah, uh, I, I don't that's buy what, it, Paul. What, okay, that's you what know, he's saying. I know, I know. I think it's potentially a very dangerous deal, and I think the best way to think about this is uh, it's analogous to China. If you go do business in Cuba, you have to be in partnership with a, a Cuban. And what you're going to be in partnership down there with is the Cuban military or the Communist Party, just as in China, the opening enriched the People's Liberation Army. And I think who's initially going to get rich from this is the Cuban military. Right. The Cuban military has relationships with the Russians and with the Chinese, and so I think we're actually reviving Cuba as a military state. I would draw a distinction with China. I mean, when Deng Xiaoping opened up, he let private agriculture, for example, flourish, and you could have your own private plots and sell. They don't allow that in no. Cuba yet. They haven't even gone that far. Right. I'm wondering if anyone in the White House actually understands how Cuba works. The president used the word isolate or isolation over and over again in his speech. Cuba is not isolated. Cuba has European, Latin American, 
Asian investors all over the island, but it's still very poor. Why? Because, as Dan says, Cuba controls everything inside. The idea that we're going to embrace Cubans, we're not allowed to. All they're saying is, you're going to drop the embargo, and we are going to selectively decide who gets to do business in here so that we maintain control and run the economy. No matter what happens, look, people have to keep this in, in perspective. Cuba is a small, highly impoverished island in the, in the Caribbean. There's a talk about a bonanza for American business. That's, that's ridiculous. We are not opening a major, uh, a major market. We're having a potentially, potentially fruitful policy with a small and destitute communist dictatorship that desperately needs a lifeline from the United it's States. It's fascinating to see the po political breakdown here. You've got Rand Paul endorsing basically the president's position. Some other Republicans like Jeff Flake, Jeff Flake uh, favorable to it. But then you have Marco Rubio, senator from Florida, and Jeb Bush, former governor of Florida, saying they're not uh, pleased with it. So well, think, why, the, me, why the split? Me, why the split? Let me mention two more poll Democrats. Senator Robert Menendez of New Jersey, who has Cuban-American, Cuban-American, and former governor of Florida, Bob Graham. Democrat both criticized the deal and said it went way too far is which is to say any politician who actually understands Cuba as Mary was describing it realizes that what Barack Obama has done is way beyond anything but we've been criticized I got the emails you've got the emails Mary from you know from our editorial this week which was kind of skeptical of this although not totally condemning because we did endorse the, the basically the prisoner swap but they're saying look you're behind the times we've got to get into Cuba it's going to open up big Big business opportunities. You know, if there's such big business opportunities there, why are the Mexicans saying, hey, you guys go in? Why don't they go in? I find that amazing. Because they don't have all an embargo the... on them. Exactly. They can go there. Why are they encouraging us to go there? I, I, I smell a rat. All right.